So uh, as I mentioned, one of the examples of these um, applications that can be run in BDS is UFI shell. Uh, you probably saw UFI shell. Uh, it looks like, like on the screen. Uh, it's very MS-DOS-like. Um, it has some kind of mix of the feeling uh, between Linux and, uh, and DOS. But yes, this is like more like a, a, a primitive environment with everything's running in ring zero. Um, yeah. So, so according to UFI uh, uh, specification, this is example, UFI shell is example of OS absent application. So yeah, we have no OS, but we have something running. Um, it is typically disabled on consumer platforms, but um, but we can include it as a as a um, uh, executable on the uh, bootable device, and in that way we can we can just run from it. And of course, uh, if the the bootable device is uh, contain this boot um, x64 EFI uh, standard EFI will iterate iterate over, assuming that we have no secure boot enable, it will find it and it will execute it. Typically, before um, interactive shell of UFI shell is started, there is startup NS uh, script executed, and we we can see that um, in that script the, there might be some automation put, and we we can do some um, automated stuff in startup NS. Yeah, so it can be used for more sophisticated uh, BDS implementation, but typically this is not used like that. Typically, it goes through through the boot order variables and that's it. The control is more on the OS ladder side. Yeah, so UFI shell can be very useful when your OS refused, refused to boot. And in that situation, uh, we can access various boot media and find for the for our EFI files, bootloader EFI file, and just like kick, uh, kick the um, the loader from the from the shell directly, and uh, it should work if nothing else is is corrupted. And below we have a very simple um, UFI application. We're just doing hello world, so you can see that it's uh, it's um, uh, it's extremely simple. Um, maybe compilation of that requires some additional stuff, but uh, but it's it's very simple uh, programming environment. 